Welcome to TRS Clips, India's fastest learning portal. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit that bell icon. One thing I've noticed with Web3 folks, crypto folks, NFT folks is I love all the ideas. I love how passionate they are about it. I love how motivated they are about it. But obviously, like as my friend Nikhil Kamath put it, they kind of glass half full kind of people <laughs> where it's sometimes a little too optimistic. Um, and and similarly, like, you know, there's a lot of old school people primarily from the finance world because we're talking so much about cryptocurrencies nowadays, uh, maybe from the Web2 world as well, which is very hesitant about Web3, Metaverse, um, crypto, all these things. I feel you're the kind of good neutral perspective on this because you're somewhere in the middle of it all. So uh, what's your take? What excites you about our future when it comes to technology? Wow. So <laughs> I think I can just go on for six hours only for one question <laughs> that you just asked because go you it. dropped Metaverse, you dropped Kip Crypto, you spoke about blockchains, you spoke about NFTs, and there's just so much for each one of these uh, types of technology, if I can call that as hmm. uh, Ranveer. But, uh, but, but let me just start at the concept level of what you said, right? Yeah. Uh, in my view, when people ask me that, look, what do you think? What's the future, et cetera, et cetera. I like that line which says, Nothing can stop an idea whose time has come. And that's blockchain for you. Hmm. Crypto is an application of blockchain. Web 3.0 is an application of the blockchain technology. Now, there are various ways of achieving what blockchain does via, you know, different ways, but blockchain is the most popular way. So the future and I'm not saying everything in the world will be on blockchain. No, no, I'm not saying that, right? But I'm saying that a lot of what we will do in the near future, not very distant, would definitely be powered by blockchain because it's fundamentally a different way of looking at things. It's almost like, you know, it's like when writing was invented, like Socrates freaked out his story. And, 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 and you know, there were all sorts of funny things. When the engine was invented, it was like, oh, it'll bar blast off and, you know, uh, it'll cause more deaths than when car was invented. Oh, there will be more road accidents and therefore it's better. Uh, Henry Ford had that very, very famous saying that if I asked people of what do you want to commute faster between two places? Uh, they would ask for faster horses and not the car, you know, which used the which used the engine. And I would say uh, blockchain as a technology is exactly that, Ranveer. I would say it's a fundamentally different way of how you look at peer-to-peer -peer connectivity, how you look at communication happening. And uh, there are two key elements of blockchain, Ranveer, which is out there. One, it is distributed second it has a shared memory it's really that simple you have to go to the basics also like i mean <laughs> while a lot of the listeners know what blockchain is there's a lot who don't so sure. you have to go to the abcs sure let's start from the abc let's start from the b of blockchain sure. and uh, let's take a step back and uh, uh, let's divide the word blockchain into two mm. blocks which are put into a chain mm. is called a blockchain really that simple what does that mean? It simply means that whenever you're doing a series of, I don't want to call it transaction. I want to call it- uh, Just actions. Actions is actually a better word, right? Mm. When you're doing a series of actions, which one follows the other, follows the other, follows the other. And technically think about it. Everything you do from the morning, it's a series of actions that you're doing today, which is after a series of actions you did yesterday, et cetera, et cetera. That can be a transaction also, by the way. If you actually think about, you know, 10 years back, look at your bank account, right? Mm. You can actually track which day how much money you got, which day how much money you spent, and that's a series of transactions which are out there mm. and put that together. Now that's crypto. Now, of course, on, on the internet, right? When you go to facebook.com for the first time, starting from creating your account, till putting your information on the account, till actually liking, commenting. Can I say it's a series of actions that you're taking, mm. which can actually be, you know, linearly stored in a very normal white paper. I can just write a, you know, normal paper, Excel sheet as a, hey, number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. Mm. Now, that's first bit I want to start with saying that because we all live in a time series, right? It's literally... T equals zero when you're born and you're moving forward from there. <clears throat> you can capture everything that you do in a linear fashion. Mm. Now, when that happens, 
and you capture every single aspect of a particular type of action, the more popular one being Bitcoins, right? Cryptocurrencies. When you capture all transactions one by one in a block, so you imagine one block, and I'm simplifying, I'm like super dumbing it down here so that that's how I understood like long back when I was studying blockchains, right? If you, if you just put like, there are just two people, you and me in the world, and in total there are 100 rupees. Can I say that 100 rupee which is there, the sum total of what you and I will have first has to be 100 rupees? Mm. Secondly, no matter how much transactions we do, the sum total will always remain 100 rupees. And who has how much money at what time can be determined with two things. One, how much money in the beginning did you and I have? Suppose you had 70 rupees and I had 30 rupees. So it starts from t equals zero from in the beginning of time. This is mon how much money you had, this is how much money I have. And every time we have transacted, if we put that in a very simple Excel sheet, oh, every time Ranveer, you give me five rupees, I give you 10 rupees, you give me 20 rupees, you give me 30 rupees, and you're left with now 40 rupees and I have 60 rupees, right? Suppose that is the transaction. Can I say it is very simple to maintain history just by seeing the transactions? Mm. What happens in a cryptocurrency when they use blockchain, instead of two people, there are millions of people which are transacting. Instead of saying that there are 100 rupees because the currency value is fluctuating, but the number of blockchains, or no, sorry, the number of Bitcoins in the case, by the way, the answer is different for every type of Crypto cryptocurrency. Mm. So the total number of Bitcoins was finitely capped to a particular number, mm. 21 million at some mm. point, that's some, somewhere around that. So it was already defined of the total number of Bitcoins that can ever exist. Mm. And then you had to do something called proof of work, and you can get into that if you want, to mine those currencies. In other words, that's why I said it always starts by saying how much do you have? Mm. What is the total sum, 100 rupees, and in that you had 70 and I had 30 to start with. So it starts as the first block saying, this is how much money this person has, and that's who you are. And from there, every transaction is captured in a particular block. So today when you do a transaction on a Bitcoin, it basically says this Bitcoin wallet, it basically is private keys of the way encryption works there. So uh, this Bitcoin wallet, the, the private key is signed using the public key. So your actual identity is the public key, uh, which is actually a cryptographic key using which you're sending the money to a particular cryptographic key. Mm. The way in WhatsApp, your phone number is your identity. Mm. In the world of Bitcoins, your public key is your identity. What if you're sending 0.0012 to like someone? Does the blockchain become smaller or something? No, so I'm saying the blockchain will only keep becoming bigger and bigger because blockchain doesn't care about the value of transaction. Okay. The entry that you're doing, whether you do it for $1 million or 1 million blockchains, uh, sorry, 1 million Bitcoins, or you do it for 0 0.000001 Bitcoin, it doesn't matter, it's an entry. Mm. So, okay, I, I'm, I'm asking you this from a visualization perspective. Sure. When we say something is based on blockchain technology, you're definitely not talking about just one chain of blocks, right? I'm talking about one chain of blocks. Only one chain one of blocks. One chain of blocks. Okay. I'm, is, I'm talking about each block, and that's the reason I'm saying every time there's a transaction anywhere in the world. Got it. The block has to become bigger. Mm. It doesn't matter what the transaction is. Got it. And Ranbir, what happens is this entire block, because remember these are text strings, right? Mm. Text characters, right? And let, to simplify that. So this will be a, you know, th this will be a few MB file which will be out there. That entire block is stored at thousands of computers. Mm. Got it. So that becomes the blockchain and that's why it's called blockchain because every one, every block will have list of transactions and every block is connected to the next block using the previous blocks hash value. Mm. And therefore, if you change anything in a very old block, even in the previous block, you have to change every block moving forward. Oh. And this actually happened, by the way. Uh, has it ever happened that blockchain, uh, some blockchain technology has changed transactions from the past? Can you change it? The answer is yes, you can. But then majority of the 
key stakeholders have to agree saying okay there was a screw up we did say 6 months back and we want to change that this is a good example of ethereum where there was this huge exchange which actually got hacked mm. and there was millions of dollars which basically got disappeared and they they were transferred so a lot of people in fact majority of the ethereum community came together to say nope that's not right because there's so many people impacted i want to go to the point of reversing the transaction and please keep this in mind a person cannot do it it has to be the entire community and even in that run we while most people said we should do it there was still a small minority of people said no we should not do it i mean this was people and their conscious decision of transferring money there and they got hacked and hacks happen and and that's fine so what happened was there were two different types of ethereum which was born therefore it's ethereum classic and then there's the other ethereum which is out there so you can change the thing but it needs thousands of people how, how do they make a decision like they have come together at some conference or like what <laughs> what is it chat forums of course chat forums. so there are various chat forums which are out there there are uh, you know th- th- there's so many ways of communication if somebody wants to just keep listening in what's going on there are irc channels uh, which are out there and uh, we spoke about deep and dark web there are a lot of forums which are dedicated for the discussions of individual types of crypto and there are mm. a lot of you know again there are flavors of cryptos which are out there and uh, and there is a bunch of people and this is the reason why a lot of people think oh crypto means completely decentralized no it's not completely decentralized it's just that there is not one company which is making money out of it which controls it mm. but there's still a bunch of people who control uh, the first principles of how the blockchain that particular blockchain is supposed to operate and behave got it so uh, again going back to the visualization where you said that Bitcoin as a currency has one chain which attaches a series of blocks to yes. each other, and every time anyone transacts in it Bitcoin, it adds more to it. Yeah, any other world. So someone in Brazil could be doing it this second. Someone in Pakistan could be doing it this second. Correct. And things have been added on the blockchain. And blockchain has a problem of number of transactions per second. Okay. The reason I added that complexity, that's the reason why when you want to do a transaction on, say, bitcoins, for example. Bitcoins can only take up to and it depends you know x number of transactions per second. So in other words, if you right now want to make a transaction on Bitcoin, you can't immediately make it. Mm. Because there's a limit because remember every block goes to the network and says you have to tell me if I'm a valid transaction. So so Bitcoin you know will be a few transactions a second. Ethereum now goes up to like 13 14 15 transactions per second uh and, and and that's just where we are that's a technological uh i would say challenge and that's the reason why scaling it up to crazy ways where you know if you say oh i'm going to have the bitcoin wallet on my phone where i will pay for every coffee and i will pay for every uh thing it doesn't happen you mm-hmm. can fast forward the transaction by paying more but then your transaction fees will go up mm-hmm. So basically, every time you want to exchange money for Bitcoin on a crypto exchange, uh-huh. you're entering a sort of queue, an international queue. Yes. And then when you're ready, whatever you can exchange yes. your money for. So it can either be you exchange it for very little transaction fee, but it'll take much longer, mm. or you can pay more. It's like a VIP service, right? Mm. So you take that, and then you actually get ahead of the queue because, uh, and, and that's how you will be able to, you know, transact okay. faster. So that was one question I had. The other question is, you know how you said that okay, Bitcoin is governed by one chain which has blocks linked to each other. Yes. Similarly, Ethereum is running on a separate chain with its own blocks. Yes. Similarly, whenever we say that okay, this is a blockchain-based technology, it has its own chain yes. with different blocks. Yes. That's the logic. Absolutely. Okay. So blockchain essentially means that you're absolutely right. In first principles, mm. you always have blocks which are connecting to each other, mm. and there is a history. So again, I said there are two things. which define the concept of blockchain one it is it is distributed the second it has shared memory so so something which is computing at not one like the transaction validation of a particular crypto will not happen in one system on one server that happens today in a bank right mm. so the bank goes okay do you have this bank balance yes you do i approve of it and you're able to go ahead and do the transaction immediately that's one server so one it's very very distributed 
where there'll be thousands of systems, again, thousand depends on what crypto you're talking about, but there'll be a lot of nodes which will be computing exactly the same thing, mm. uh, you know, and saying, is that a valid transaction or not? And if majority of the nodes which are there in the network, and you also build a reputation of the node depending on the number of years, the number of, you know, currency that you mined, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a full algorithm for that also. And once most of the, a chain says that yes this is a trustable valid transaction that is where it becomes formally a part of the blockchain and the new blockchain is then broadcasted in the whole network mm -hmm. uh, saying you know this is where it is most uh, most of the nodes already have that because they were the ones who validated or also uh, but and if there is any anomaly so i'm trying to send you 100 dollars why only i only have 50 dollars in my wallet so it will flag that as an anomaly and that will not become a part of the blockchain which is out there. Mm. So blockchain as a technology, you're absolutely right. It's blocks with transactions which are shared with each other and they share a common memory mm. because that's a common memory between everybody which is out there. So that it becomes theoretically decentralized. So it that is people, definitely decentralized, mm. yes.